Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Monday, October 8th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. China Labor, China Labor Watch is reporting that another strike broke out on Friday at a Foxconn factory in China. The report says three to 4,000 Foxconn workers were unhappy about having to work during an extended national holiday and also that Apple is putting them under immense pressure to deliver iPhone 5s at higher quality standards without providing adequate training on how to improve yield rates. Saturday, Foxconn issued a statement denying that production was affected. With this being another recent strike in, in several weeks at Foxconn, how is Deja Vu impacting Apple? Joining us now with his breaking analysis is Silicon Angle founding editor Mark Risen Hopkins. Welcome, Mark. Howdy. So to summarize quickly, Foxconn employs more than one million workers in China. They've suffered in the past three years from suicides, riots, strikes. Foxconn employees have been reported to work as many as 12 hours a day. And now they're saying the difficulties of meeting Apple's demands for quality standards uh, have caused abuse from guards and set off these most recent incidents. So what's the solution here? So it is really hard to say what the solution will be without actually uh, changing the whole of the human rights abuse issues that exist in China uh, on, you know, on a much larger scale. Uh, and, and I think it, actually before I go too far into the answer to this question, it's important for me to point out that on some of these things, uh, the issues that Foxconn employees are, are experiencing, like such as the suicides and uh, some of the work conditions, um, they are while they while they are serious uh, issues. I mean, many times, someone there where there's a suicide in the workplace or around the workplace, it's a big deal. But suicide rates around Foxconn are actually below industry average. This was uh, something that Steve Jobs and the Foxconn uh, officials made a, a very uh, important uh, show of uh, talking about when it when it was uh, first made into a, uh, an issue and story uh, last year. But I mean, in, in terms of a solution for for this kind of ongoing uh, problem for the workers, uh, it's it, it's kind of an odd situation because Foxconn does provide slightly better standards for its workers than most other manufacturing outfits in China. It actually gives them more leverage to ignore the human rights abuses, or as as the, the West sees them as human rights abuses, because uh, they're 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 able to uh, kind of hold the pay rates underneath uh, over the workers' heads. Um, they, uh, they pay above minimum rate. Uh, they pay above minimum wage in China. Uh, they pay uh, around 200, actually up from 229 a month to around $339 a month, uh, which is far above what uh, minimum wage is in China and what uh, the average pay is in China. So the, you know, when, when you're talking about uh, them striking uh, at the Foxconn uh, factory, it's, it's, very, uh, it's very difficult for them to do so in the first place just because they're walking away from more money than probably all their friends and families have ever seen in any particular job. Apple sold 5 million iPhone 5 models in the first three days on sale last month, and the demands of the public are causing more pressure on plant workers do you think Apple needs to slow down the rollout of future projects to prevent this future worker mistreatment? I, I think that they would have a hard time doing so. Uh, they would see severe backlash from the company. I mean, it, it's it's kind of a game of opportunity cost for them. I mean, they've got they've got issues uh, with this is all about a PR issue when it comes down to it with uh, Apple. I mean, it, sure, there's more at stake on a, on a moral level, but uh, when it comes down to it, Apple has having to deal with this strictly on a, on a basis of a PR uh, problem and will this prevent them from selling more iPhones in the future and to to actually slow out the, the role of iPhones uh, to prevent the loss of sales of iPhones in the future seems somewhat uh, antithetical to the end goal so uh, would them slowing out the slowing the, the manufacturing down or slowing down the demand for manufacturing uh, solve or help alleviate some of the problems, it might, um, but it would also undercut the bottom line. Can you tell us about what's driving these so-called higher quality standards that Apple is enforcing? So uh, there's been some complaints from, from, from uh, customers about uh, getting a, an iPhone 
uh, off fresh off the shelf or fresh in the mail and there's some scratches on the back cover or some sort of like uh, you know, imperfection on it then you know Apple has made a their reputation on being absolutely perfect, perfect product every single time. And so uh, they're held to a much higher standard by the consumer than uh, any other brand out there. And, and that's what, really what this is about. It's exacting standards that uh, uh, the consumer has set for Apple because Apple has set them for themselves. So these higher demands by consumers, are consumers to blame for the mistreatment that's happening at these plants? Is there anything that they can do? And so, I mean, at the end of the day, the only people that are truly to blame are, uh, are Foxconn. I mean, you, you can try to blame the user on this, uh, but this is nothing more than a, re a consumer reinforcement of the marketing cycle that Apple has put out there for, dec you know, for close to a decade, if not longer now. We do not screw up. We make a perfect product. That's, that's the Apple uh, mantra. And, you know, consumers have bought it hook, line, and sinker. Literally, they, they buy it. Uh, and that's why they buy is because they make a perfect product. Uh, and so um, you can't really blame the, the end user other than to say that, yes, they continue to buy something uh, like an iPhone while they know that there is human rights abuses going on during the manufacturing process. China Labor Watch reported Friday that iPhone 5 production lines were in a state of paralysis for the entire day. However, in a statement on Saturday, Foxconn said production at the plant continued without an eruption. Why did Foxconn deny any strike or work stoppage? Uh, so in the modern era, uh, command and control PR just doesn't work in the West. Uh, in China, it does because you have state-controlled media and you know the public believes whatever you tell them because you know industry is the government is the people is every so i mean it's it's just you know the difference in having a free media and not having a free media and uh you know they it's very china is having a hard time just as a culture acclimating to an always on social media enabled world and uh, they think that they can get away with you know basically lying to the public about what's actually going on when the public can very easily find out through other means quality control inspectors began brawling with workers and that led to some damage in an ex in an inspection room, injury of several workers, and even the hospitalization of others. It's reported that Foxconn factory management turned their back on the issue. Uh, why would management not take any corrective measures? Uh, this is slightly puzzling. Uh, the only answer that I can give you is they thought that they might be able to get away with it. Um, uh, and I, I can't tell you anything other more, more definitive than that because really only only Foxconn knows why Foxconn did what they did. Uh, we can only theorize. And uh, I, I think the mentality must go back to the, uh, the mentality that, th that their PR thinks that they can control the story and deny anything went wrong. Last month, a Foxconn plant in northern China halted production after a brawl. The latest reports from the China Labor Watch say workers are back on the production lines now. So will there ever be an end to the problems at Foxconn, or is this a never-ending cycle? And so this is actually, uh, I think it's a never ending cycle with, uh, with larger implications than what you may even be asking me, because I believe, so I, I think that while human rights, abuse, human rights abuses aren't going away in China at all, first of all, I mean, that, that's, it's, it's going to take years uh, for the country as a whole to achieve the economic prosperity that's going to allow them to unionize and, and uh, kind of go through the same sorts of uh, work workplace improvements that America went through uh, around the time of the Industrial Revolution uh, so uh, and, and thereafter. And it took a long time for America to do it. So you've got to assume with, with China being a much larger uh, country population and landmass wise uh, with a, a still strong agrarian uh, economy component to it, that it's going to take a much longer time for them to modernize and get better uh, rights for workers. Uh, but beyond that, um, I think that there's something going on here with Apple as a brand uh, involved in this becoming a never ending issue. Uh, if you were to ask uh, uh, John Furrier here at the company the same question, he might disagree with me, but I believe uh, the loss of Steve Jobs at the helm has actually uh, encouraged this uh, problem to rear its ugly head in, in the press uh, much more so than uh, it would have had was he still alive uh, because of the uh, famed reality distortion field that exists around uh, exists around this just a very charismatic man and so he could you know wave his hand and and problems disappear and uh you know people stop thinking about it and he's not here to do that anymore uh 
the last time this came up, the last time, well, not the last time, but uh, the last time there was major outrage with the public and people were saying, we need fair trade Apple. Uh, he went on stage with Kara Swisher, talked a little bit about how we have a new Apple here. We have a new approach to manufacturing. We're, we're, rights of the workers are in our, in our hearts. and We're better than anybody else. And people believed it and the issue went away for a year. And since Tim Cook has taken the helm, we've seen the drumbeat against Apple on their manufacturing processes come up with a regularity of once every couple of months. So I think that this is an issue that, to direct, directly answer your question, is an issue that's not going away. So is the answer then for Apple to cut all ties with Foxconn? Uh, I, you know what? I think the, the, the answer here is for Apple to uh, maybe go with production that's not in a... Uh, you know, in such an economically depressed environment. I mean, bring it back to uh, a society that uh, has uh, labor standards. China has no labor standards, and that, that's the crux of the issue. When, when you move manufacturing to a, a country with no labor standards, no matter how much pressure you put, them, put on them as the buyer, they will basically do what they are allowed to get away with by cultural and legal constraints. Well, Mark, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Mm -hmm. No problem. For all the latest in-depth coverage and breaking analysis on news of the day, keep up to date with News Desk right here on SiliconANGLE TV.